Now that we have our full client ready, we could write a lot of additional user interface tests, but not using, by not using the user interface automation tool, but just writing some tests against the view model. But I'm quite sure that you can imagine how this would work. Uh, my time's running out, so I'm trying to do the very final step that is maybe a little bit more interesting than just, than just coding some additional user interface tests. I want to show you how easy it is with, uh, when, when having a view model to implement a Silverlight implementation of exactly the same functionality. So for this, we add a new project to our solution, and this time we use the Silverlight template. We use a Silverlight application here and let, let's call this one ski result.thinClient. It asks me where I want to host the sample website and yeah it's for, for now it's it's fine to host it in the data service project. It's not very beautiful but for the sake of the simplicity in this demo let's host it here in this existing ASP.NET project that's fine for us. Let's define this one as the startup project and let's take the HTML sample page as the start page. Yeah, that's one fine. This one's fine. Now we have to implement some, uh, we have to implement the Silverlight thin client. First thing, the Silverlight thin client has to use exactly the same service reference than the full client. And therefore, first thing, I changed the default namespace. Maybe you can remember that step. I did the same in the full client. The classes that we add now are not specific to full or thin client, therefore I changed the default namespace to UI. So add the service reference here. Discover it. Everything's fine. We call it key result service. Okay. And maybe you know in the civil light world all WCF cores are, are always asynchronously, so we don't have to change uh, anything here. It's automatically enabled for asynchronous use. And now comes the important part. In the thin client, we add a folder which is called view modal, and in this view modal folder, we say add existing item. From the list of files, we go to the full client here to the view model and we add the existing view model. And notice the following I don't say add, I say add as link. Now we have a link to exactly the same source file in the full client and we reuse the already written code. And just to prove that this works, I'll hit up the compiler. And everything's fine. It compiles perfectly smooth. So we really use exactly the same view model, the same source code for the logic behind the user interface. Of course, we could now implement a completely different view than in the full client. But in our case, the XAML is quite simple and therefore we have a good chance that we can just copy the XAML into our Silverlight page. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have a little problem here with the data grid, but that's not a problem. Maybe you know that the data grid here lives in the SDK namespace. Let's call this one SDK. And we have to have a small prefix here. These are the small little differences between uh, WPF and Silverlight and it's it's very seldom that you really can use exactly the same XAML source uh, XAML markup file for WPF and Silverlight but the important thing the logic is um, defined inside the view model that's the point so I did something wrong here maybe I can remember it wrongly just let's just let me um, quickly look up if this one's correct. I open up my MSDN library and I look for data grid. No, sorry, I need to have the... You see, this one's live. <laughs> we have to have the data grid and it's 
here it is as you can see uh, maybe I misspelled no I did something else I'm, I'm sorry I think I don't think I messed it up with the the namespace here I just forgot to add another reference sorry we need system.windows.control.data here is this is where the data grid lives and now build it again build progress let's see and build succeeded reload the designer doesn't it want this one look familiar to us yeah so let's start this one the silver light version of our application Internet Explorer comes up here is our thin client what is wrong yes you're right we forgot I forgot to connect the Silverlight page with our view model so we are missing exactly this two lines of code we need our view model of course together with the appropriate using and we need to set the data context of the view to the view model start again and here yeah here we are here we have it let's go in there here we have a small little problem with the Silverlight version I'm quite sure that again I forgot a mode two-way Silverlight is very strict here much stricter than than WPF here you see I again forgot mode equals two-way in WPF you don't need to care about that in Silverlight you always have to look at the binding mode select this one oh looks nice change it from 1.6 to 1.8 click on save change to SQL Server Management Studio and here you are 1.8 so what did we do let's step back for a moment and think about it we just copied the comp we didn't even copy we linked the pre-built implementation of the whole user interface behavior in the form of the view model from the full client to the thin client and even so we had to change some lines of code in the markup in the XAML file between WPF and Silverlight we could use all the pre-built logic that we have developed and tested for the full client in the Silverlight client too that's the magic of MVVM architecture reusing and easily testing user interface logic business logic um, by encapsulating all this logic into the view modal layer